Hi guys, welcome to Lantern's channel. In this episode I'm going to take you on a first-person immersive tour of Spain's most famous museum, the Prado Museum. I spent 8 hours there, from noon until the museum closed at 8pm. I was the last one to leave. My love for European museums can be traced back to 2017 when I first visited the British Museum and the Louvre in Paris. I still remember the feeling of opening the door to a new world of knowledge and beauty that rushed into my brain. Later, I went to the British Museum a total of nine times, but there was still too much knowledge that I could not absorb, leaving me feeling overwhelmed and hoping to come back again. Compared to 2017, the atmosphere on China's internet has undergone huge changes. In the past, people would thank vloggers for sharing knowledge and translating knowledge for them. Nowadays, with just a one or two minute video, TikTokers standing in front of the British Museum can easily get millions of likes by cursing the museum. In 2017, when I walked out of the Louvre and the British Museum, I was not only shocked, but also regretful. Why didn't I realize earlier that there was such a vast world outside? Why didn't I watch some introductory videos when I was 16 or 18 years old to broaden my mind? If I had been exposed to this knowledge earlier, it would have been so much better. Seven years have passed, and I have grown up and become an expert, but sadly Chinese people are losing their thirst for knowledge. Nowadays, there are many people who are so ignorant and shout loudly, what's so good about Europe? We already know everything about it. These people don't know what they don't know. I realize I know nothing, was my state of mind in 2017. My approach in this video is to describing my journey of self-improvement and the evolution of my mindset. In 2017, I was hoping for a predecessor to guide me, but unfortunately, there was none. So this video is also a salute to the younger me, like Sheldon Cooper did. In fact, each of us initially possesses this learning ability. Boys like war games when they are young, such as Age of Empires. This is pure entertainment. Later, some people shift their focus to the real history such as ancient Egypt and Greece and gradually move on to study real-world ancient history and modern history. This is how they gradually broaden their knowledge base. What I am talking about today is this kind of mental journey. However, many people, after reaching their youth, use this innate learning ability in the wrong direction, such as delving into how to play games or how to drink at nightclubs. Perhaps you have spent tens of thousands of hours in these areas, but in the end, you may not have gained anything. However, when you stand in front of some historical site, you suddenly realize that Napoleon might have stood here, Churchill may have stood here, and even Alexander may have stood here. This kind of feelings will make you confident and positive, making you aware of the gap between you and those historical figures, which is both close and far away. This will force you to speed up and catch up with the footsteps of those historical figures. You may even feel that one day, you may be able to catch up with them, at least in terms of the amount of knowledge. Famous people are also ordinary people, so you will absorb knowledge day and night. However, the people around you have naturally been left far behind, and their emotions are not as important to you anymore. If we limit our discussion to European museums and European history, I recommend that you enter through two paths of knowledge. The first is based on the famous European museums. Go through the introduction books and videos of these top museums one by one. Almost every top museum has very high quality and beautifully printed books. I'll give you some examples, such as the British Museum, which has a book written by the director about the 100 most important collections in the British Museum. Each collection will lead to a paragraph of world history, covering various histories across the five continents over thousands of years. However, reading books is just supplementary because the famous paintings printed in books are 2DL and the colors may not be accurate. So, it's normal not to feel the full impact of the art at first, as I did. It wasn't until I went to see the paintings in person that I fully appreciated their charm. Another aspect to consider is watching videos. A few years ago, I tried searching the internet for videos of various museums, but the quality varied widely. Some museums offer videos as good as BBC level, but their ultimate goal is to get you to buy a ticket and go in person. Therefore, they won't let you watch everything online. However, these videos serve as a good introduction. As for unofficial videos shot by individuals, like fan videos of concerts, their production quality is not as good as official videos but. The advantage of these videos is that they are more generous in sharing their length of content. Lastly, there are wealthy hot girls who pretend to be interested in museums but are actually there to take photos and show off on Instagram. These videos have no educational value. The second path of knowledge. 
you can buy books like 100 Painters 1000 Masterpieces or similar keywords from any publisher. As long as you are willing to put effort to read carefully and familiarize yourself with these 100 painters, it is enough because they usually represent the famous figures who have been at key points in the development of human civilization. After such exploration, you can basically recognize the familiar styles in any European museum or recognize the painter mentioned in the book. This way, while wandering in the museum, you will have a great sense of accomplishment and surprise when you can easily recognize and appreciate the art. For example, you may find that the painting in front of you is similar to another work by the same author that you have seen before. And you can begin to think about the similarities and differences between the two pieces. This unique thought process brings you the joy of contemplating art, which cannot be replaced by others because everyone's knowledge and experience are different. This is why some people can spend hours in art museums, because each painting has its own story, and the interaction between the painting and the viewer is unique. However, those who are still ignorant may not understand why we can stay in the museum for so long. For example, when some people visit the Louvre, they immediately head for the Mona Lisa, they waste their time on other focus, such as how many selfies they can take, and which side of their faces looks more beautiful. Which is why many people never really understand the beauty of art. Here, you can observe that many young Westerner can stand here for a long time. It makes me wonder whether Chinese people generally receive rote learning education and lack the ability for independent thinking. Standing in front of a painting, a normal minds can wander freely and wildly. However, Chinese education teaches them to recite dates and texts word for word. Without any room for personal interpretation. The historic museum inside China won't allow professors to change even one single word, otherwise you are against the will of the central. Therefore, they fail to understand the significance of standing in a museum for so long, as they can simply memorize the information at home. This is also the reason why there is a significant difference in the mental outlook of these two countries of people.